A new virus that could infect humans has been discovered thanks to a cat. Mirror microbes could slip past every immune system on the planet if they escape. And just recently, a grad student's mix of oil, water, and nickel turns into a solid that moves like it's alive. These are times scientists accidentally discovered something terrifying. Pepper is a seven-year-old black short hair cat who likes to drop off dead animals on the doorstep of his owner, Dr. John Lednicki, who happens to be a virologist at the University of Florida. He brings me these rodents and then I bring them to the lab. That's where all the magic happens, Lednicki said. Well, one day Pepper dragged home a half-chewed shrew and Lednicki decided to take a closer look. Turns out the shrew was carrying something brand new, a mutated strain of orthrovirus that no one had ever seen before. These viruses usually show up in bats, deer, monkeys, and lions, but they can jump between species as well. The new one was named Gainesville Shrew Mammalian Orthrovirus Type 3 Strain UF1, which is a mouthful, but basically it's a bug that might infect humans. The grad student named Emily De Reuter was the one who extracted it in the lab. The funny thing is, this isn't Pepper's first time doing this. Last year, he brought home a dead mouse that helped scientists find a totally new rodent virus called J. Long virus. As for this latest one, De Reuter said they don't know enough about this new strain to say that it could be a risk to anyone yet. Back in December 2024, a group of almost 40 scientists, including two Nobel Prize winners, put out a warning about something called mirror life. These are lab-made bacteria that are almost identical to normal microbes, but flipped or mirrored. And they can be dangerous because your immune system can't detect them. According to Dr. Jack Zolstak at the University of Chicago, if, quote, robust mirror bacteria were created and released into the wild or escaped from a containment, the result could be catastrophic, irreversible damage. Michael Kay from the University of Utah called them the ultimate invasive species, warning they could wipe out natural defenses in both people and the environment. Professor Von Cooper said he didn't see the danger at first until he realized just how quickly the science is advancing. There's no way to protect the planet from these bacteria they'd be invisible to our immune systems, he said. Scientists are now pushing for more rules and regulations surrounding this because if one of these microbes ever got out, we might never stop it. A grad student at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, Anthony Rake, was running a basic experiment, mixing oil, water, and nickel particles. He shook the vial, expecting it to separate like salad dressing, but when he set it down, the mixture didn't do what he thought it was going to do. Instead, it pulled itself into this weird vase-like shape. And no matter how many times he shook it, it always went back to that exact same form. That's really odd, said Thomas Russell, one of the researchers. Normally, liquids try to keep their surface area as small as possible when they separate. That's part of the laws of thermodynamics. But this shape was the opposite of that. It had more surface area, not less, which made no sense at all. When they looked closer, they realized the nickel particles were magnetic. Each particle was acting like a tiny magnet, forming chains along the surface that changed how the whole mixture behaved. The interactions between the nickel particles sort of took over, Russell said. The magnetic pull kept the shape stable and made it seem like the liquid was breaking the laws of nature. It didn't actually defy thermodynamics, but it was something none of them had seen before. Just recently, a group of scientists made a big discovery about the galaxy completely by accident, all thanks to a planetarium projector. Earlier this year, scientists at the American Museum of Natural History were setting up a planetarium show. They were putting together Encounters in the Milky Way, a new exhibit that maps how stars and planets move through our galaxy. One scene featured the Oort Cloud, a mysterious zone way beyond Pluto, filled with frozen leftovers from when the solar system first formed. While testing the visuals one night, the team suddenly noticed something odd. Why is there a spiral there? Asked astrophysicist Jackie Ferretti, who was helping design the show. The Oort Cloud, which is basically a giant bubble of frozen comets way past Pluto, was always thought to be round. But when they looked at it on the planetarium dome, it didn't look round at all. It looked stretched out with two curved arms spiraling off the sides, kind of like a smaller version of our galaxy. A 2006 biologist checking on hibernating bats in upstate New York discovered something 
horrifying. The floors of the caves were covered in dead bats, piles of them. When they looked closer, they saw a strange white fuzz growing out of the bat's noses and wings. The culprit turned out to be a fungus that no one had ever seen before, later named Pseudogymnoascus destructans, or P. destructans. It causes what's now called white nose disease, and it's wiped out millions of bats across the US and Canada. This is the most dramatic wildlife mortality event that's ever been documented from a pathogen, says disease ecologist Deanne Reeder. For years, scientists thought they understood the fungus, but a 2025 study led by Sebastian Pushmai at the University of Montpelier found that it's not just one species, but two. The strain in North America called PD-1 came from an area in Ukraine called Podilia. Genetic evidence points to an 18 square mile stretch of caves there as ground zero. Puchmai thinks spores might have hitched a ride on caving gear brought back to the US sometime after the early 90s. The other strain, PD-2, still hasn't reached North America, but if it ever does, it could be catastrophic. Alfred Nobel was trying to make the world a safer place, ironically. The big problem in the 1860s was nitroglycerin. It's a hugely powerful explosive, but it's liquid, which meant it was unstable and would blow up if you just looked at it wrong. Nobel's entire goal was to figure out a way to transport and use it safely. The accidental discovery happened in 1866. A worker's wagon carrying nitroglycerin exploded en route, and when Nobel's team examined the wreckage, they found that the explosive liquid had soaked into the surrounding packing materials, a chalky type of rock called ditomaceous earth. And instead of blowing up, the absorbed liquid had turned into this putty-like solid. He named his discovery dynamite. What is the terrifying part? Well, dynamite was of course meant for construction, blasting out tunnels for mining, stuff like that. Of course though, we know it didn't end up being restricted to that. It was so effective, so easy to manufacture, that it was immediately co-opted for warfare. So this accidental invention ended up creating the template for almost every modern high explosive weapon. Nobel became incredibly wealthy, realizing too late that his invention had given the world a tool for mass destruction. But he was so messed up about it, he decided to use his fortune for good, creating the Nobel Peace Prize. Next up, we have Agent Orange. In the 40s, researchers were studying synthetic plant hormones, or oxids. Their goal was to find a chemical that could act like a hypergrowth fertilizer. Instead, they accidentally discovered that when they made these hormones into a concentrated chemical and used a ton of it, they created a super poison. The plants would grow out of control at incredibly fast speeds until it collapsed and died. Basically, they'd created a poison that caused plants to grow themselves to death. 20 years later, during the Vietnam War, these chemicals were used to help create Agent Orange, which they used to kill all the leaves and trees in the jungle to expose enemy hiding spots. They ended up spraying over 80 million liters of this stuff. Agent Orange has been found to cause all sorts of problems though, cancer, Parkinson's disease, and most tragically, birth defects. The earliest discovery of the core chemical, what would become mustard gas, happened way back in 1822. A chemist was combining a couple of common substances and he ended up with this weird, oily liquid. He described it as smelling foul and causing blisters on his skin, but he didn't realize just how dangerous it really was. Decades later, another scientist was making the same oily compound by mistake and accidentally exposed himself, getting so sick he was out of action for weeks. They were just doing regular lab work and this oily byproduct was a mistake, a failed attempt at creating something else. But in World War I, military scientists who were desperate to break the brutal stalemate of trench warfare remembered this nasty chemical accident. They took that oily mistake and they weaponized it. The terrifying thing about mustard gas is that it isn't something that instantly kills you. It's a blistering agent. It causes slow, agonizing damage by creating huge blisters on any exposed skin. Worse, it attacks the soft tissues, your eyes, your throat, deep inside your lungs, leaving chemical burns everywhere. It's another reason why World War I was incredibly horrific in the trenches. The discovery that eventually gave us the atomic bomb was actually a long string of clumsy mistakes in the lab. In the early 1930s, a physicist Enrico Fermi was experimenting with uranium, the heaviest element 
they knew about at the time, trying to see if he could make an even heavier one. Scientists were curious about heavier elements because each new one could teach them more about how atoms hold together maybe even reveal entirely new forces in nature. Fermi shot tiny particles called neutrons at uranium, expecting the atom to just get bigger, but instead he ended up with smaller, unexpected radioactive bits left behind. He was convinced he'd succeeded and even won the Nobel Prize in 1938 for what he thought was a brand new super heavy element. Then German chemists repeated his experiment. Those fragments weren't a new element at all. They were ordinary elements, like barium. What had actually happened was the neutron had violently split the uranium atom in half, releasing an enormous amount of energy. This is what we now call nuclear fission, the most powerful and destructive force humanity has ever created. In 1896, Henry Becquerel in Paris was obsessed with X-rays. They'd just been discovered, and everyone in physics was talking about them at the time. Becquerel had been studying phosphorescence, which is when some materials glow after being exposed to light. And he wondered, could glowing minerals like uranium salts give off invisible rays like X-rays? He set up an experiment layering photographic plates with coins and other random objects, wrapped them in thick black paper, and placed uranium on top leaving them in bright sunlight for hours. When he developed the plates, shadows of the objects showed up perfectly, just like with x-rays. Then came a string of cloudy days, so Becquerel left some plates with uranium in a dark drawer, expecting nothing to happen. When he finally developed them a few days later, though, he was shocked. The images were just as strong as before. The uranium wasn't reacting to sunlight at all, it was emitting energy on its own. This discovery set off a wave of research. Marie and Pierre Curie went on to isolate radium and polonium, and scientists started realizing that radioactive materials could be both incredibly powerful and deadly boxes. All that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.